Hi and welcome to my first video for our new social cognition topic. Today we're going to be introducing the topic in general and also talking about attitudes. So these are the key ideas and areas of learning that we're covering today. Really important that you're checking these off as we go as well. So social cognition, I guess what is it is a good place to start. Um, cognition in general refers to mental processes involved in acquiring knowledge. So how we acquire, store, retrieve and use information and people sometimes refer to cognition as thinking in general. Now social cognition um, more specifically is concerned with the way that we make sense of the social world around us. So it's about the mental processes by which people make sense of um, ourselves, others and the social situations around us. <clears throat> okay so social cognition um, based on these cognitions, we make judgments about ourselves and others, okay, which is why this is a really great topic because you're trying to understand, I guess, yourself a bit more and the people around you. Now, people process their experiences in day-to-day -day life in accord with pre-existing views of reality. So because everyone in life has had different experiences, each person interprets the world around them a little bit differently, which is why it makes it so interesting. Um, to study. So social cognition, these are the processes used in interpreting, analysing, remembering and using information about the social world. So I guess that's a bit of a backup definition to support the earlier one. Now many basic attitudes come from direct personal experiences. So in terms of social cognition, we're really going to be focusing on attitudes um, a bit more specifically. Now attitudes, what are these? So an attitude is a learned evaluation a person makes about an object, person, group, event or an issue. Okay, so try and avoid thinking about, um, you know, when your parents tell you that you're giving them attitude and think more about, um, it's I guess a belief or a learned evaluation that you have about something in particular. Now the structure of attitudes, really important that you um, understand this one in a lot of detail. So um, to, to explain the structure of attitudes, we use the tri-component model, sometimes referred to as the ABC model, and you'll see why in a second. So you can break it down into A, B and C. The effective component is to do with your feelings. Okay, so this is about your feelings and your emotions and the way you feel about a certain topic. Okay? Um, your behavioural component of your attitude is your behaviour, it's what you do, okay, your actions. Now the cognitive component, these are your beliefs based on, um, I guess, knowledge that you have about that attitude. So it's your belief, ideas, opinions and knowledge as well. So now that we've learned about it, I guess, more generally, let's have a look at an example. So consider someone who doesn't like smoking, has an attitude where they totally just disagree with smoking, they don't like it. Let's break that attitude down into the three different components. So you have the effective component which is the I feel and this is that you know I hate the smell of smoke I really I just don't like it right? the behavioral component would be that I don't smoke right so I, I hate the smell of smoke and there could be a whole bunch of other effective components in there but I, I don't smoke okay it could also be that I don't like to socialize with smokers now the cognitive component so this is the belief so I believe smoking leads to cancer and overall bad health so this is that kind of knowledge base that I'm drawing on to help me figure out my attitude. It's that this is why I suppose you can think about, I, I think it leads to cancer and it's an overall bad health. Now, we've talked about um, attitudes in general and their structure. Now we're going to talk about the function or the functions that attitudes serve. So attitudes help people understand the world around them lead, I suppose, an adjusted life, you know, having um, attitudes about things around them. Um, attitudes can protect your self-esteem and help you to express your values. Okay, so you can break this definition down into four different categories and we're going to go through these in more detail. So let's have a look at the knowledge function. This is the need for meaning. So one, I guess, one reason you would have for an attitude or one function it serves is to give you meaning. Um, now this knowledge function, it helps people to know how to act when they face people and situations. Um, we may form an attitude because it helps us explain the world around us and we use our, that should be our, previous attitudes and knowledge to decide how to react to a new situation. 
So if I know that I don't like smoking, um, it helps me perhaps to work out who I'm going to stand with at a social gathering. Um, it also might help me work out um, health related issues, that kind of thing as well. So that's that real need for meaning. The next function, value expressive. We have attitudes, I guess, and they express who we are as a person and an individual. So um, attitudes allow us to gain positive feelings about ourselves through expressing our attitudes um, about our beliefs and self-image. And the reward is establishing our self-identity. So this lady on the right, she is wearing active wear and it could be that she has just a general attitude that um, she likes working out, that she's quite sporty. And so she's able to, I guess, identify herself um, and kind of express her value and her beliefs about um, being active through her clothing as well. Um, you also see this with people who support sporting clubs. They will often wear that clothing as well. So it's really um, expressing who we are as an individual. Now the next one, utilitarian. So this is the idea that um, we have attitudes to maximise rewards and min minimise punishment. So we develop positive attitudes towards things that will reward us. So in the case of politicians, you're more likely to vote for someone who's going to help you um, and do things that are in agreement with your values and they're actually going to make a difference in your life. And we have a negative attitude towards things that don't reward us or even in fact might punish us. We saw that this was definitely the case recently um, when the politicians were talking about um, I guess the, the tuition rates for accessing university and also um, Centrelink payments as well. Okay, so that is the utilitarian function. And the very last one is ego defensive. So we have attitudes to protect ourselves from unpleasant realities, right? So to protect us. Now, this is a defense mechanism to protect our self image. An example of this is having a positive attitude attitude towards parties because you're actually afraid of being alone or lonely. So you're going to like that because it protects you from facing that harsh reality that perhaps you are a lonely person. Okay, so this has been a bit of a long video. As always, please see me for, please see me for questions and also check out these resources if you need more information. See you next time.